One of the greatest tools that we have as watercolor painters is dry brush painting. So today we're going to talk about using a dry brush technique to add motion and life and excitement to your paintings. So let's take a look at this painting here. So dry brush is when you're using less water and more paint on your brush and you're pushing your brush around and typically that will show the texture of the paper. So if you look at this tree here, these broken edges, these broken shapes here are created with dry brush. Same thing with this tree here. So we are seeing more of the texture of the paper and you're leaving, you're doing a quick brush mark and leaving some paper behind and kind of letting it skip along the paper a little bit. So the reason why dry brush is important is it gives your paintings a sense of motion and some energy. You can suggest detail with a few dry brush marks. You can paint some directional lines. So if you look here closely at this painting, you see these directional lines here. Those are dry brush marks that I did later on in the painting process. So if you take a look at this painting, this power line that kind of skips across the sky here, that's a dry brush mark. I've used dry brush here in the foreground to add texture to this scene as well. And so in this painting, you can see some dry brush marks in the trees here and some dry brush marks in the grass. So one thing that this does is it gives you more texture and, and texture can can bring this area forward. So here's another example. So some of these trees are br dry brush marks. This pole here, there's a little bit of dry brush and some of these wires that are cutting across the scene. Again, directional lines are dry brush. And I think what's nice about having this as another tool in your painting practice is dry brush and watercolor is a nice contrast to really soft smooth washes. So something that I find attractive is when you have harder uh, more textured brush strokes on top of a really smooth sky wash. I find the contrast of those two add some interest to your painting. So let's talk about how to make dry brush marks. So I'm gonna take a piece of paper here. I'm gonna get some paint on my brush and I'm using a small synthetic brush. You don't want a lot of water when you're trying to make dry brush marks. So if you wanna do directional lines, you can just make sweeping fast brush marks and when they skip across the paper, what they leave behind are these dry brush marks. So I use rough textured paper partially for that reason, because when I paint, I like to see a little bit of the texture of the paper. But if I'm using a lot of water, I'm not going to see that texture. So that's where dry brush comes into play. So if you want to, you know, quickly suggest a figure, you know, in the background or something like that. Dry brush can be good for things like that, as well as trees and other things. So one thing that's helpful is to turn your brush sideways and kind of paint with the side of your brush rather than the tip of your brush. And so if you're doing that, you can see how you could create some trees in the distance with just using the texture of the paper and using a little bit of paint or a little bit of water and more paint, you can make marks like that. So this is a good thing to practice too, just getting comfortable with your brush, with different types of brushes. So, you know, if you wanna make some directional lines, It's good to practice those types of marks and get comfortable making them. 
I'm painting some cobalt turquoise in with some raw sienna, however you like to mix your greens. And so if I don't have a lot of water on my brush, but I have more paint on my brush and I'm turning my brush sideways, you can you push your brush around and practice these type of energetic brush strokes. And this is good for trees. By pushing your brush against the grain of the brush, you can also do that as well. So I hope you found these tips helpful. Practice painting dry brush. Take some scrap paper, see what kind of marks you can make. Get comfortable with this technique and see if you can add some more motion and life and excitement to your paintings. And I wanted to mention, if you haven't seen my free video lesson, eight tips to avoid overworking your painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below or you can get to it in my bio and Instagram. I've gotten some great feedback from this video lesson and it's been very helpful to solve a big problem that I have had to deal with and that is overworking your painting. So check out my free video lesson if you haven't done that yet and I'll see you next time.